Hello and welcome to yet another Silver 1999 Let's Play episode. This will be episode 7 if I'm not mistaken. If I am mistaken, I will be corrected by my own title. Last time we were able to finish everything in rain, we got ourselves the first orb, the fire orb, and we got ourselves a new party member in VVN. Now we're going to leave this and we are actually going to be... Uh, going to the Oracle. That's where we need to go. Hopefully the game won't crash because I haven't saved in a while. That would be terrible if the game crashed. Please don't crash. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now if we go... So basically, if we go over here, this will be the rebel camp. If we go over here, this will be where we need to go. Now, uh, Dr. Bazuki um, sells potions, but I'm not gonna get potions for now. What I'm going to do is preemptively equip my fire magic, because something tells me I'm gonna need it. There we go. We can see some ice. There we are. For some reason, this whole place is covered in ice. And this is why we needed the fire magic. Because we have these little drakes or wyverns or whatever you want to call them. Is there anything up there? There's nothing up there. But there is a need to open this with a key. Thankfully, we already got that key. Now, as you will be able to see when I'm done with all these wyverns. That's what I'm going to call them. They might be drakes, but I'm going to call them wyverns for now. A lot of years playing Magic the Gathering tells me these are wyverns. You can choose either to go uh, on the top path or the bottom path. I usually take the bottom path, so you know what? To change things, I'm going to take the upper path. And now that we have to deal with armed people, I'm going to try and show off a lot of damage that our lovely Vivienne does. There we go. That's quite a lot of damage, I think. Vivienne is a master swordswoman, although she's not going to be using a sword for long, because we don't really need a sword anymore. We need the axes, because we just got an axe, which is brilliant. Now, we do want to go in the bottom path here. Uh, go for me. Um, trust me, if you go up... There's nothing there for you right now. Finally, we haven't saved in a long time, I think. Let's finally Hello. save the game. And spoiler alert, we are very well on our way to the second dungeon of our playthrough. The Ice Dungeon. So here we have our first few enemies. And we are dealing quite a lot of damage. As you can imagine, the axe means that if you deal swipes like these, you'll deal more damage than if you do lunges. Which makes a lot of sense, if you think about it. Thankfully, Sukune is quite strong with her bow and arrow. That's really good. Really, really good damage. Um, now, we're getting Roast Rat. Believe it or not, Roast Rats are incredible healing items. Because they will heal for 120 health. Which is a bit overkill for now. But eventually they will be really, really helpful. Speaking of healing, that might be a good idea. Let's carry on. Now, thankfully, this dungeon here is quite small. Uh, one thing I will mention is... Just in a second, let me just deal with these. Boom, there we go. That's a lot of money. 50 and 25. You might be seeing these little chest shapes over here. We will need to come back to them eventually. Not right now. It will be way, way long... Uh, way, way... Um, yeah, there's still a long way to go now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, there is definitely still a long way to go. Now, believe it or not, this is actually the last room in the uh, the whole dungeon. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Now, Sukune, will you have enough arrows? Barely, but... Uh, that works. 
David, you have more magic points, so there we go. And Vivienne, for now just use these, because something tells me your melee skills will not be perfect for this. Guess what? Five minutes into the episode, and we are already in... A boss fight! Yes, this is our second boss. This Viking over here. There we go. Deal some damage. There we go. Bit of a hack and slash. You just need to avoid his attacks and attack him in the meantime. And deal a lot of damage. And... Okay, David is already out of a... Out of magic. But he can get these magic orbs that replenish his magic power. And... There we go! That was really easy. That was pathetic, actually. And we already got a level up, so woohoo! And guess what we get as a prize? We get... An Ice Orb. This is our second orb. Brilliant thing. Absolutely brilliant. We still have six orbs left to find. Oh, I love this pose. You must be David. Your reputation precedes you. Thank you. But who are you? Oh, I'm just a runner. Professor Velding heard of your search for the orbs and believes he has some key information. He said he'd wait for you in the entrance at the library at No. Good luck. So now, we will need to get ourselves to the Library of No once again. Now that we're done with getting the two first orbs and we've dealt with one enemy, one boss, let's just go to the library entrance because uh, a professor will give us uh, Professor Whitley, Whiteley? I don't remember his name. He will give us the next objectives, basically. Uh, vital. My supply line. You mean tether? Yes, I, I probably do. Oh dear me, it's worse than I thought. What? My sanity. Sanity? Yes, yes, yes. I, I knew you'd understand. I'm afraid words become nonsensical if my mind remains inactive for an exterior period of time. I need a philosophical conundrum to ponder. Ponder. I'm afraid we have none. Okay, I'll have to find my own. So we don't have a philosophical conundrum, I'm afraid. Apologies. We heard that you have some important news regarding one of the orbs. Yes, I heard. It's Professor, Professor Veldi. And I was just relating the details of my own discovery to the professor. And it is most interesting. I was fortunate to unearth some old scriptures that recount stories of an ancient, long-forgotten cathedral called Spires. It was reputed to house a magical orb of healing. But I'm afraid that the city had the misfortune to sink, taking both the cathedral and the orb with it. Don't worry, all is not lost. Professor Belding has a friend. Yes, a necromancer by the name of Thaddeus. He's in residence in Lower Rain. Thaddeus has built a strange device he calls the Bathyscape. The Bathyscape travels underwater, thus allowing you to enter spires and claim the orb. How will we find this Thaddeus and his machine? When the time is right, you must summon him by reciting this incantation. From beyond the plains of Elysium and through the Red Sea of Jara, rise, Thaddeus, rise. Thank you. We will. Well, there we go. We have yet another mission. We need to find this Thaddeus. Now, I will save you some time. Actually, in order to find Thaddeus, we need to go back to David's house because to get to that part of the City of Rain, we will need to get that key that I um, could have gotten before but decided against because I wanted to do the first, um, the, the, the second boss first. 
So, now that we're back in David's house, we need to make our way over here. And you'll see we will come back to David's house quite a lot during this story. Or by quite a lot, I mean three or four more times before carrying on and moving on forward. Also, Professor Wheatley needs a or Whittle needs a conundrum, a philosophical conundrum. That's something we can't do straight away, but we will eventually be able to help him with a philosophical conundrum. And it will have to do with this part of town as well. In the meantime, David, go back to using uh well, actually. Yeah, go back to using an axe and let me give the riveted shield to Vivienne as well, and let's go. Now, here it is. Let me get... Yeah, that's fine, Sikuni. You can use that. For... Actually, you use the ice one for now, because why not? And let's speak to these people, these inconspicuous people. Excuse me, but could you please... No! I am the mayor of Ray! And I know your sort! I cannot be beguiled by your feminine charms! At this very moment, you are forging a plan to rob me of my worldly treasures! You want to run your sword through my ample belly and feed my rotund carcass to the wolves! No, no, I Jeebus. have no offense that you think I'm a murdering slum dwellers! Guards, protect me! Well, oh, that thing just disappeared out of existence. That was interesting. Right, so now we have the key. Now we could go to Rain, but what if we killed two bosses in one episode? You know what? I don't need your opinions because I'm doing it. I decided to do it. Let's go. Let's go. What happened? During the last eclipsed moon, a ferocious storm brought a huge firebolt down from the skies above Medellin. It crashed here and caused the surrounding devastation. After the fires died down, we found this. Scorched metal? Is it armor? Yes. We feared it was a knight, but we found no trace of blood or scorched remains. So, while I'm dealing with these um, things, with these um, uh, fire demons, I should mention that uh, even though Vivienne was the one to talk here, there's no specific set talkers for, for any of the dialogue. Actually, all of the actors recorded all of the lines in which they could appear, in which their characters could appear, uh, just so uh, if you have one of the characters selected, so for example if you have Vivienne selected as your main, she will be the one to um, do that talk. She will be the one to, to say those lines. And the same will work for any other characters you have. So same with David, same with Sukune, same with any of the other characters we still don't know. I think that's a very interesting way of doing things. Honestly, I do. Um, I'm going to give David this, and Vivienne will have the uh, throne daggers for now, and Sukune will have the magic wand, because we are going to need that. Because in this boss fight is yet another one where we can only attack from a distance. Get ready, this is a fire demon. Let's deal some damage. We are a bit underleveled here, so it might take a little bit of time, but we'll definitely, definitely be able to do it. There we go. It might take a little bit of time. It might be slightly more difficult than the um, the ice boss, but I'm sure we can manage it. Right, we need to kill you so that. I can have David get his uh, magic back. Cool stuff. Now attack. Yeah, That's cool. Oh, you can actually attack melee-wise. I didn't remember you could. Well, in that case... In that case... Uh, where's my Vivienne? There you go. Have this. 
Oh, Vienna is almost dead. She's been taking the brunt of most of these attacks. Well done, David. Well done. Now, Sukune, move away. Otherwise, you're going to die. So, yeah, even though the boss might be slightly harder than the other one, it's still, you know, just a play in the park, basically. Really easy to deal with. Practically dead already. And most of the bosses will be quite easy, if I can be honest. There will be a couple of them that are going to be a bit more trouble later on. But for now... There we go. Oh, Vivienne is down. Oh, poor thing. But not for long, because yay! Oh god, that was flashy. I wasn't expecting that to be so flashy. So there we go. Two bosses in one episode. I think that was a very productive episode. And now we have the key to rain. So... Next time on Silver 1999, let's go to Rain and find that Tithorus, Tithorus, Favorus. Anyway, let's find that submarine. See you later.